Item number SCP-3197, Object Class Safe. Special containment procedures. The components of SCP-3997 are to be kept disassembled in a standard containment locker. Testing may be initiated by any employee with a level 2 clearance. Non-Foundation personnel who came in contact with SCP-3197 before containment are to be administered amnestics. Description SCP-3197 is a mahogany stand adorned with three wax candles, a cerulean bowl, two BIC pens, and a framed photograph of Alan Greenspan, the 13th Chairman of the United States Federal Reserve. A list of acceptable offerings is inscribed into the base of the stand. Several conditions must be met for the anomalous properties of the object to manifest. All candles must be lit and the bowl filled approximately halfway with rose water. The BIC pens must be placed equidistant on opposite sides of the picture. A supplicant must approach the stand and kneel, placing a piece of paper with a four-letter symbol into the bowl along with an offering. The supplicant must perform a short recitation. Our holy greenspan, hallowed be thy name, give us this day our daily profits, and write off our losses. Lead us not into over-leverage, but deliver us from margin calls. For yours is the market, and the profit, and the glory. For ever and ever. Amen. If all the required conditions are all met, the offering placed within the bowl will vanish. Notes. Attempts to determine the physics underlying this effect, as well as the ultimate destination of the offerings, have met with failure. And the four-letter symbol corresponds to a stock listed on the New York Stock Exchange, the stock will experience a return matching the relevant entry in the list inscribed into the base of the stand. Stocks listed on other exchanges are unaffected. The anomalous properties continue to manifest themselves if minor alterations are made to the ritual. For instance, if BIC pens are replaced with graphite pencils, or if artificial candles are substituted for wax. However, all anomalous properties cease if the picture of Alan Greenspan is replaced with a photograph of Ben Bermank or other Federal Reserve chairs such as Janet Yellen or Paul Volcker. Appendix List of acceptable offerings inscribed into the base of SCP-3197 A memento from the Subkin's childhood 1% The Subkin's full head of hair 2% the supplicant's wedding ring, 5%, an urn with the ashes of the supplicant's parent, 7%, the supplicant's thumb, right hand, 10%. Appendix B, interview with Jack Rossi, former equity trader with Dean Peabody, LLP. The following interview was conducted on April 6th, 2008, shortly after discovery and containment of SCP-3197. Mr. Rossi initially refused to cooperate with Foundation researchers, whom he believed to be working for an unspecified government agency. After COVID administration of EXP-URXW-23, designated by the Neurology Division, this pharmaceutical cocktail induces feelings of trust and openness without any associated cognitive impairment. And after assurances from the researchers that they meant him no harm, Mr. Rossi consented to be interviewed. Do you remember when you put the altar together? Christ, who knows? Early 97, maybe? The S&P was about to break a thousand. I know that much. Also, wasn't me that put it together. Who was it then? All I did was put the photo on it. But you were the one who brought the stand to the Peabody headquarters. Saw it out by the curb somewhere in Midtown, 56th Street, maybe? Freaking Hindus or Buddhists or whatever call them. They were throwing it out. 
took it on a whim and set it up in the break room with a big photo. We all had a nice laugh over it. Who do you mean by we? All of us on the trading floor. Dick, Lester, Phil, the over-eager juniors fresh out of school who fetched us drinks. The big boss saw it and laughed so hard he almost popped his lunch. Next day, someone put the bow in there. The pens were Phil's idea. Some loser over at Goldman told him the chairman was fond of BICs. Yeah, that was freaking fantastic. Any time a client would come in, we took them around the back and showed them our new religion, as we called it. Everyone thought it was a goddamn riot. And the list just appeared one day. Don't know who coughed it in. Nobody would admit to it. Was it very funny, if you ask me? A bit like taking the joke too far. First time someone used it was during one of the uh, corrections. I'm sorry, what is a correction in this context? Let's just say it was mid-98, a freaking massacre on the trading floor. I remember I got off easy. My portfolio was down 7 to 8%. Most had losses in the 20 to 30 percent range. Bonuses were evaporating left, right, and center. I'm telling you, I could smell the force in the air. Pardon? Most of the guys have trophy wives. You know, blondes, big tits, a few decades younger than them. Hell, some had trophy mistresses. You think a woman would stick by them once they were out on the curb? I see. So anyway, when the bell rings, and the bloodbath is finally over, Lester brings us to the brick room and does a big show. He kneels in front of the little altar, writes one of his big stocks on a piece of paper, he cites a mangled version of the Lord's Prayer and throws his wedding band in there. We're all smiling, because for God's sakes, we need some comic relief, you know? The whole time, I'm thinking of what I'd do if I lose my job. My wife, everything's solid there, knock on wood, but we have to move to frickin' Jersey. Was that when you first noticed the anomalous effect? His wedding band disappeared. Poor Sod looked for it for hours. He was still looking when I went home that day, muttering about how his wife was going to give him a serious ass-kicking. Next day, though, we're all getting screwed up the ass again, and Lester's stock pops 5%. Lucky motherfucker ended the day only a little bit in the red. So, after the stock's close, we're all smoking together. Ha ha, the thing works, doesn't it? All held a holy green span. Bill pops home and brings back some chest trophy he won when he was still in diapers. Next day, another freaking massacre. We're talking 10 to 15% losses across the board, except Phil's copy dog of his stock is up 1%. And then you began using the altar regularly. Not really. For a while, we went on making wisecracks. Ah ha, on a wage, the altar dick. Your stock's gonna be crunching, but the results were undeniable. Every time someone made an offering, the return would be there the next day like clockwork. And then, then I guess the joke stopped being funny. Gradually, we just stopped talking about it, even though we were using the thing as often as we could. Hair takes time to grow after you shave it off, you know. A month later, we moved it to a private room. Custom made lock, only a few of us had the key. Didn't even let the janitor in there. If anyone asked, he said we threw the thing away. The returns coming from the offerings doesn't seem to be very large. Yeah, dummy, you don't invest in a stock directly. You wait until all the momentum traders think a stock is gonna crumble. Then you start trading futures. On a good day, you could find a tanking stock along with some poor schmuck who bet you against a 10% raise of 50 to 1 odds, if not more. I think I have all I need. Someone else will be in to see you shortly. Out of curiosity, do you have any regrets about the whole thing? Uh, frick would I? 
digging up your parents, for example. Oh yeah, I'm sure they really mind. I bet they were happy for a grand old time in that cemetery. What about your hand? Listen, if I have trouble opening a door, I'll get my butler to do it for me.